All right, thank you, Jeff. Lorain County parents on high alert tonight after a series of incidents targeting children. First, a man exposed himself and grabbed kids on their way to school this morning in Lorain and in Elyria. A 10-year-old girl was almost snatched from her bedroom in the middle of the night. And those predators are still out there tonight. Cleveland 19 News has a live team of coverage from Lorain County. Danny Carlson is covering the story from Lorain. But we want to begin with Denise Arella. She's live in Elyria with the latest on what happened there. Denise. Dan, I'm standing right outside the house where this happened. We just got done talking to dad who told us that he was woken up in the middle of the night to his daughter screaming, saying someone was trying to grab her. He went running out of the house trying to go after the guy, but he said, Denise Sorella, Cleveland 19. Denise, and we want to put uh, to map for you to give you some context to just how close the two incidents, or at the least the two cities, uh, were. This is where Denise was live, right there on Furnace Avenue in Elyria. You don't have to go too far, just up here to Lorraine. And this is where we had three separate incidents this morning. One on Oakdale and West 18th, one on Washington and West 9th, and one on Oberlin and West 8th, all in Lorraine. And that is where Danny Carlson is live. Danny, let me ask you, do they think the Lorraine case is connected at all? to the Illyria case. Well, that's the big question that we have been asking today. Live in Lorraine tonight, Danny Carlson, Cleveland 19. Thanks, Danny. We saw other school districts in that very near vicinity uh, do what they could to get the word out. This is Amherst Village Schools uh, just to the west of Elyria. This is what they put out four hours ago. We've been made aware of three attempted abductions in Lorraine this morning by local police. Amherst police have indicated that we, as a school district, do not need to take any action at this time. However, as precautionary measure, there will be increased police visibility during school dismissals this afternoon. Uh, please be aware today within your buildings and on school grounds. So everybody in that Lorraine County area on high alert. Denise. Yeah, and they weren't alone, Dan. Avon Lake City Schools also emailed parents today saying extra squad cars would be at the schools. All of these incidents, of course, putting parents on edge. We have some tips from the experts you should definitely share with your kids to help ensure their safety getting to and from school. Now, National School Safety and Security Services advises children travel in groups. Form a buddy system. Don't walk alone. Skip the shortcuts. Follow the main streets and the pathways. Stay out of those wooded areas or isolated spots. And if someone approaches your child or attempts to grab them, tell them to yell and scream at the top of their lungs to draw attention to the situation and try to get away. You should also put away iPads, tablets, cell phones, and any other high-value tech items so people can't see those while you're walking to and from school or waiting for the bus. That can help prevent those kids from becoming a target for robbers. And uh, as expected, uh, we did we did get around two inches of snow today. Uh, a lot of that coming down actually this afternoon, not so much in the morning. We had to wait for that temperature to drop. Now there's an alert tonight for some lake effect snow. The system snow is really beginning to wind down right now. A Carl Monday investigation found that overtime in the city of Cleveland is over the top. Seven of every 10 city workers got OT last year, costing you $34 million in taxpayer money. Yeah, an EMS paramedic, one person topped the list with nearly 90 grand in overtime, earning him an even fatter paycheck than Mayor Jackson. Five construction workers earned about 150,000 with overtime. And in the Cleveland Fire Department alone, overtime was up 25% compared to 2014. Carl is joining us now with some new information tonight. Carl, businesses can't operate this way. Why is the city of Cleveland allowing all this overtime? Yeah, we want to make it clear though that, uh, you know, we, we, there's no reason to believe they didn't actually work the time. So you work the time, you should get the overtime. But there's a couple of underlying reasons why there's so much overtime. And one is just the culture in City Hall. Uh, it's always been done that way, so they kind of expect the overtime. Also, uh, the union contracts, the, the overtime is built into the contracts. Another reason is that there are less employees, so there's more time to go around. Workers have to work more hours. And there's uh, reason number four, which is a lack of supervision. As we showed in the waste collection department, some workers not doing their job and still getting paid overtime, and that's why that department uh, recently had 45 people uh, disciplined 
and their overtime ballooned to 274 percent. Wow. Carl, let's talk about the EMT, uh, the paramedic. Mm -hmm. Nobody is saying he's not doing a good job. There's, there's nothing right. to indicate that mm -hmm. he's not doing his job, but you have to wonder, I don't think it's healthy for any one of us to work 46 straight days without a day off. Why is it healthy and is there a concern the fact that he's a paramedic working 46 straight days? Yeah, this is the guy that uh, earned more than the mayor last year. He made 142000 including $89,000 in overtime. And you got to admit, that's just not, not a good thing for him or for the people that he's attending to. So we've talked to the commissioner of EMS and uh, Nicole Carlton says Gregory Hyde, uh, they're going to review his case and review the overtime policies for the entire department to see whether or not they can spread some of that overtime around. You would, you would think just, so. You would just think people need time off to decompress. We all do. Weekends, yeah. Yeah. a day off. Here, they're 46 they days. Get your safety. Mandatory six hours rest between shifts so they can work 24 hours, take six hours off, go take a short nap and go back to work. Wow. That's insane. They really don't even have to leave the building. <laughs> they could take the six hours on the couch yeah, at, yeah. The, at the station. Yeah. All right. Well, of course, this is taxpayer money we're talking about. Whether you live in the city or you work there, your mm. tax dollars are affected. I know those budget hearings are going on this week, so uh, let's hope that they can come mm. up with some solutions. We'll keep on top of it. Thanks, Carl. Good work, Carl. Thanks. Former Cuyahoga County Common Pleas Court oh. Judge Stephen Terry has been disbarred. He was sentenced to more than five years in prison for providing judicial favors in exchange for contributions to his 2008 election campaign. Prosecutors say he fixed a case for former county auditor Frank Russo, who is currently in federal prison. And a rock star's welcome for Bernie Sanders today. The Vermont senator visited Berea to drum up support in his bid for the White House. Well, just about every topic Bernie Sanders brought up got a loud applause at BW. They need to change how things are done and the need to change the business climate of the country. But Paul Orlowski noticed one thing was left out. It was a rousing welcome here at Baldwin Wallace College. Paul Orlowski, Cleveland 19. All right, well, the five remaining Republican presidential candidates will take the stage in Texas tonight for another debate. Our political expert Ryan Nobles will join us live to talk about what sort of impact this debate will have on Super Tuesday. That's coming up at 530. His story inspired the film The Shawshank Redemption, and soon this recaptured Ohio fugitive could be a free man once again. And they said, oh, we got a baby's head right here, so we need you to push. We, we ended up uh, delivering her right on 271 on the way to, to Hillcrest Hospital. And a new baby boy makes his appearance in the back of an ambulance speeding down the highway. We'll have the story still ahead at 5. Live from Cleveland's News Center, driven by Don Joseph Toyota in Kent, this is Cleveland 19 News. The battle continues to get legal weed back on the ballots in Ohio. Today, we're learning more about the impact of recreational pot can have, and it isn't good. A new study finds legalized marijuana is leading to more trips to the ER. Since Colorado made it legal two years ago, emergency room visits by out-of-staters have spiked. Doctors say experimental pot smokers aren't prepared to handle the side effects like hallucinations and anxiety. They also say that edible marijuana products often have a delayed reaction, which could trigger an overdose. Well, in New York, a controversial plan would give heroin users a safe place to shoot up. In an effort to combat soaring deaths from overdoses, the mayor of Ithaca, New York, wants to let heroin addicts use the drug under supervision. The city would provide clean needles and have medical staff on standby with the overdose antidote Narcan. Well, his story inspired the famous prison break film, The Shawshank Redemption. Great movie. We've all seen yeah. it a hundred times. Back in the 50s, Frank Freshwaters received probation for killing a pedestrian in Akron. Now, but he later violated that probation and was sent to the Ohio State Reformatory, then to a work camp in Sandusky from which he would later escape. Now, after nearly 60 years on the lam, a cold case unit caught him in Melbourne, Florida, where he'd been living under another name. The 79-year-old fugitive was put back behind bars in Ohio. He had a parole hearing in Columbus today and was uh, just granted release. Wow.
An update now on a Rogaine robber we first reported about yesterday. If you're in the market for hair regrowth drug, beware of buying at a local flea market or online. Police in Cincinnati just released these surveillance pictures of a bald man stealing Rogaine from Walgreens drugstores from Kentucky to the Cleveland area. He's clearly not using it on himself, but detectives believe he is reselling it on eBay, Craigslist, or flea markets for less than the $50 retail price. A tiny baby boy made for a busy day for Shaker Heights fire crews yesterday. Between cleaning the station and putting out a house fire, they delivered him while speeding down the freeway to the hospital. Check it out. This is Kira McLaughlin. She says her water broke, so she called for an ambulance to get her to Hillcrest and fast. When paramedics got there, they said they should be able to make it in time, but once they got on their way, little Zamir had other ideas. Right when we got on 271 and we realized like we're going to be delivering this baby in route. I had a couple of contractions and they said, oh, we got a baby's head right here, so <laughs> we need you to push. And push maybe like three times and he was out. Those calls are few and far between. Those are, the stress level goes a little bit higher on those. Zamir wanted to come right there and he wanted to make his grand entrance and he wanted it to be special. That's my birthday present. My birthday's tomorrow. Aw, well this is Kira's third child, but this was her fastest labor. She made it to, to the hospital in time for the first two. Yeah. Better that, it better in the back oh, of a, you know, with a pair baby. of an ambulance exactly. than in a car. Than in the yeah. car, yeah. yeah, exactly. Remember in the, the old school movies, they used to go, get the hot water, I need yeah. some hot water here. <laughs> like, <up laughs> like, what are you going to do for, with hot water, <laughs> you know? Yeah, <laughs> wash the baby after he's out. <laughs> that That's might about be it. it. Or make some tea, one of the two. <laughs> All right, let's look at the uh, visibility uh, reports here. Dan? Thanks for getting us through the storm, Jeff. When it comes to finding love, what you do for a living may be more important than how you look. Coming up next, find out which jobs men and women find the most attractive. And we want to get to some breaking news. This just came into our newsroom. A jury has reached a verdict in the case of a Brexville man who crashed into five cyclists and unfortunately it killed two of them. Yeah, jurors found Tim Wolf not guilty. The crash happened last September in Brexville. Now, Wolf was facing charges of vehicular homicide, but yesterday in court we learned also that police thought Wolf may have been texting at the time of the crash. Again, he was found not guilty. Your job may matter more than your looks when it comes to finding love. The dating app Tinder is out with a list of jobs that attract the most attention. The top five that men are looking for, physical therapist, interior designer, entrepreneur, PR communications, and teacher. Pilot is the top job when women are looking for love, followed by entrepreneur, firefighter, of course you knew that was going to make the list, doctor, and hey, TV radio personality. How's that working out for you? Oh, not too shabby. <laughs> <laughs> the ladies' man here. <laughs> Get out He's going to turn Stop. red, too. This is what he Stop. does. Go. I'm go sorry. Away. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, they spent years saving up to help others in need, but someone just stole children's donations from a church. We'll have that story still ahead at 5. Like we do every day at 5.30, it's time to talk politics. Donald Trump is pulling away from the rest of the GOP field. And tonight could be the last chance for the other candidates to try and catch him. Yeah, the five remaining Republican contenders will face off in a CNN debate. It's tonight in Texas. Our Ryan Nobles is joining us live now from the University of Houston, the site of tonight's showdown. So, Ryan, this is a big night, and it could be a turning point in the race, right? I mean, it could be, Denise. You know, I, I, you know, the opponents to Donald Trump have all been attempting to, to edge each other out uh, to become the alternative to Donald Trump, and they've been doing it by beating each other up. But maybe tonight on this debate stage, Donald Trump will finally become the target. He's had rocky debate performances before, and it has never knocked him from that frontrunner status. Dan and Denise. Ryan, as we like to do, let's talk uh, Ohio Governor John Kasich. Uh, and as it gets to the debate tonight, maybe Cruz and Rubio, they focus on Trump. Maybe this is a chance for Kasich to rise above, keep on his positive message, or will there just simply be too much noise coming from Trump? 
Yeah, you know, that's always been the problem for John Kasich in these debates, Dan, where, you know, he is not the type of candidate that uh, equips himself well uh, when it becomes an attack fest. And if there are attacks being thrown uh, at each one of these candidates, Kasich uh, will often have a shining moment where he kind of tries to become the adult in the room, but then he's forgotten because if you can't play that game, it's really difficult uh, to make any kind of a, a lasting mark on the debate stage. But he does need to do something to stand out. You know, he is not really doing very well in the polling in many of these Super Tuesday states uh, in the vote that's upcoming next week. He's really kind of pinning all of his hopes on winning Ohio, which is pretty far down the road. And there are still increasing calls for him to get out of the way so that there can be some sort of consolidation of the vote against Donald Trump. But at this point, almost any one of these candidates that isn't Donald Trump can make the case that they've got the best opportunity to win. So Kasich tonight really needs a strong performance so that he can bolster his argument uh, in that debate. Might be the best debate yet. All right, thank you. We'll be watching tonight. See you soon, Ryan. Thanks for the time. <laughs> we have new developments today in an Akron murder case. Tiffany Powell was sentenced to life in prison in connection with the death of her ex-boyfriend. Prosecutors say she lured James Harris to her house by asking him to look at a car for sale. When he arrived, he was beaten to death by Powell's new boyfriend, Paul Reed. Powell will be eligible for parole in 30 years. Reed was previously sentenced to 15 years to life. Well, a woman in Cincinnati is facing charges for trying to smuggle a gun into a courthouse hidden in her bra. Brandy Patricia Ross was taken into custody after deputies say she went through the metal detector just inside the front doors of the Hamilton County Courthouse carrying a 22 caliber gun. She was promptly taken next door to the county jail. Hmm. In Illyria, the hunt is on for the heartless thief who stole donations from a church. And you see, children had been collecting that money for years to donate it to a home for troubled youth. See, a New Yorker is live with that story. Yes, Washington Avenue Church, Christian Church has been collecting money to support Cleveland Christian Home for decades. They tell me they were so close to filling that jar and writing a check. Now, thanks to that thief, they'll have to start all over. The church staffers really didn't want anyone to know about this, but news spread and now some good is coming out of this. This Sunday, a sister parish will host a chili cook-off at Eaton Christian Church right down the road. Donations will go directly to the Cleveland's Christian Home. Back to you. Well, thanks, Sia. Uh, I-480 is back open in Twinsburg. It was shut down for several hours today after a semi-jackknifed this morning. The driver of the big wig was trapped in his truck for about an hour and a half until firefighters were able to get him out. He was taken to the hospital. No word on his injuries. All right, Lynn, uh, what a difference this afternoon it has, huh? Look at the skies. Clear skies now. No snow right now at the moment. This is a live look from our Fiesel roof cam. And so, Jeff, how about it? Is it over? Are we done with this? <laughs> uh, the worst of it is over, yeah. The 24 only for your high. And the planner, 7 a.m., 20, only 22 at noon, 25 at 5 o'clock. But as I mentioned, this cold spell is going to be short-lived. And I'll show you why in the seven-day forecast uh, coming up. Denise? All right, Jeff, thank you. A penny for your clothes? J.C. Penny is staying true to its name and selling some of its merchandise for literally one cent. We have the details next at 5. The city of Menor posted a video to its Facebook page just about seven hours ago. It is a sweetheart of a video that already has more than 300,000 views. We're going to show you the video and tell you all about it coming up. Walmart is pulling hoverboards from its website following the government's warning about possible fire hazards. The company wants suppliers to prove that the boards comply with new safety standards. Target, Toys R Us and Amazon have also stopped selling them. Well, a new meaning is coming to the name JCPenney. The store will now start selling merchandise for literally one cent. The retailer is calling it Get Your Pennies Worth, and the sale will involve its house brands like its Arizona products. And this is one of those stories that's just going to warm your heart a little bit. This is uh, Doris, and every day for the past five years, and this men or woman has walked to the end of her driveway to blow kisses to the kids on bus 46. They call her grandma, and recently on her 88th birthday, the children stopped and gave her a very special surprise. Happy birthday! 
That's just great. Neighbors say the children make Doris so happy she cries every day when she sees them. Since it's been posted on Facebook on the City of Mentor's website, uh, this video has uh, now been viewed close to 300,000 times. How incredibly sweet. And look at her. Rain, yep. shine, doesn't matter. She's out there. Just wants to see the kids off, Aww. give them, blow them a kiss on their way to school. Sweet. Very cool. All right, well, our view of the day. Scott took this video in North Olmstead. The snow is really coming down on 480. Jeff Tanchek will tell us what's in store for the weekend. That's coming up next in his First Alert Focus. First Alert Traffic on Cleveland 19 News is sponsored by Ford. Let's take a look out there now that most of the snow has ended. Uh, no accidents here. This is the I-480, 77 Cloverleaf and Independence. We do know there are quite a few slow spots. No accidents, according to ODOT. But you can expect that, uh, seeing as how it really snowed pretty much all day. Yeah. Speaking goodness. of, yeah. we got through it. Yeah, yeah, and you know, in the beginning, the first half of the day, it was really hard for the snow to accumulate because the ground was warm That's from the it. warm weekend. Mm -hmm. So the roads were and, bad. Yeah, and so most of the accumulating snow came during the afternoon. It was one to two inches, uh, most of that on the grass, and it is beginning to wind down now. And tomorrow's going to be a very cold day. We're going to get one day here where temperatures are going to be, you know, quite, uh, quite a bit below average uh, with the high of only 25 and blustery. Some leftover uh, light lake effect and flurries in the morning, but then tomorrow night temperatures will actually go up and then look at what happens over the weekend. It's the winds of change again, 46 Saturday. We only dropped down to 41 Saturday night because of the south wind and Sunday 58. Uh, with a partly cloudy sky. We got a shot of rain Sunday night, very quick. And then Monday we clear out, sunny 45. Look at Tuesday, an alert 63, very windy. Afternoon rain into Tuesday night. And then a big plunge in temperature on Wednesday as we quickly fall. And it uh, looks like it may snow on Wednesday. You get all the forecast details as well on the Cleveland 19 First Alert weather app. Their 10-day forecast, hourly forecast for your neighborhood, and when we get the watches, warnings, advisories, you'll get them when we get them. Denise? All right, Jeff, thank you. The musical Hamilton is a huge hit on Broadway, and we could soon see it star on the big screen. We have details up next in The Buzz. Now, it's time for The Buzz, sponsored by National Carpet Mill Outlet. Well, the star of the hit Broadway show Hamilton could be headed to the big screen. And the White House last night was rocking. Hey, hey, ho, ho. That's Usher leading an all-star <laughs> sing-along to the Ray Charles hit What I Say. The president and first lady paid tribute to Ray Charles last night. The event was streamed live online, but in case you missed it, you can catch the program tomorrow night on PBS. Time I'm thinking past tomorrow. And Hamilton creator and star Lin Manuel Miranda may be trading his Revolutionary War era costume for a London lamplighter's look. Variety says Miranda is talking with Disney about the lead role in the proposed sequel to Mary Poppins. He would play Jack, a character resembling Dick Van Dyke's Bert from the 64 original. Now, last week we told you Emily Blunt is the top choice so far for the title role. And TV's most popular sitcom is marking a major milestone. The Big Bang Theory airs its 200th episode tonight on CBS. The show is promising a special cameo and the return of some old favorites. You can catch The Big Bang Theory tonight at 8, right here on CBS 19. And we're following breaking news just in. Dallas police say Cleveland Browns quarterback Johnny Manziel's domestic violence case is headed to a grand jury. We'll have much more on this breaking news coming up at 6. All right, and I'm uh, keeping an eye on the now lake effect snow that could be developing, and boy, it's going to be getting colder for a little while. Details coming up at 6 as well. You're watching CLE 43. Now, live. 
It's Cleveland 19 News at 10. We are following breaking news from Chicago where a rally for Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump has been canceled due to fights breaking out and security concerns. Protesters inside the University of Illinois at Chicago Pavilion clashed with police, forcing Trump's campaign managers to postpone the rally for another day. Craig Boswell has more. Craig Boswell, Cleveland 19. And one of those rallies is right here in Cleveland at the IX Center. We reached out to Cleveland police asking them if there will be increased security at the event. And they sent us a statement a short time ago. It says the Cleveland Division of Police has a security plan in place as we do for all scale events. We do not discuss staffing or deployment for tactical reasons. Ohio Secretary of State John Husted says he will not appeal a judge's decision to let 17 year olds vote in Tuesday's presidential primary. About 10 teen voters and Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders had sued over Secretary of State John Husted's interpretation of Ohio's voter law. He says teens can vote to elect someone but not nominate delegates for the presidential race. A Husted spokesman says for the sake of the election, the state will not appeal the ruling. Marco Rubio still says he's a serious contender for the Republican presidential nomination, but now he's willing to work with rival John Kasich to stop Donald Trump. Clearly John Kasich is, has a better chance of winning Ohio than I do, and uh, if a voter in Ohio concludes that voting for John Kasich gives us the best chance to do stop Donald Trump there, I anticipate that's what they'll do. The Kasich campaign responded saying they are confident Rubio supporters in Ohio were going to vote for the governor anyway. Ohio's primary is next Tuesday. Cleveland 19 News with a special election coverage getting you ready to vote Monday night, 1030 right here on CLE 43 and 1130 on Cleveland 19. You can also read up on all the issues and candidates online and on election night, a full night of results and analysis beginning with the mobile cast at 730, followed by expanded coverage on CLE 43 and Cleveland 19. Cleveland 19 has been telling you about a major security issue at a local detention facility that has had multiple escapes. Now our Scott Taylor, who broke the story in January, is discovering the security issues crisscross the state. Your tax dollars pay for 18 facilities like this one across Ohio. But the McDonald facility here in Cleveland is special. Last year, it led the state in escapes and also offenders who just walk out of the place and vanish. Scott Taylor, Cleveland 19. Well, this afternoon, the Browns made the cut everyone knew was coming. Johnny Manziel was waived by the team. The quarterback, who showed so much promise at the start, ended up being better known for his parting and off-the-field drama, TMZ, all that stuff. Mark Schwab is here with more. We Mark. wanted to pop champagne, I think, in the oh, newsroom okay. when this Because we finally don't have to deal with it anymore. Don't have to deal with it. If you don't have it here, you're done. All right, Mark. Thanks so mm -hmm. much. Douglas Prade's bid to get a new trial has been denied. Prade spent nearly 15 years in prison for the murder of his wife, Dr. Margot Prade. His lawyers say DNA testing that was not available when Prade was first convicted could prove he's innocent. However, Judge Christine Kroos said Prade's uh, attorneys failed to prove a valid reason to grant a new trial or expect a different verdict with a new trial. State and local investigators are still looking into the cause of yesterday's explosion at a construction site at Crocker Park. Now we spoke off camera to one inspector who says the propane tank may have been leaking and then was somehow ignited. He says he thinks the heat of the fire made the liquid propane in the tanks boil and when the heat eventually hit the vaporized gas in that tank it caused an explosion. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Hundreds of dignitaries and celebrities honored the life and legacy of Nancy Reagan at a private funeral service today. The former first lady was very involved in planning her memorial service at the Reagan Library. Officials uh, here say that she chose everything from the flowers and pallbearers to the program and guest list. First Lady Michelle Obama paid her last respects, as did former President George W. Bush and three former first ladies. The Reagan's children, Patty Davis and Ron Reagan Jr., reflected on their mother's devotion to their father. When my father was shot and my mother rushed to the hospital, they at first wouldn't let her see him. I have to, she said. 
You don't understand how it is with us. She will once again lay down beside the man who was the love of her life, the one she loved till the end of her days. Nancy Reagan will be buried just inches from the former president on the Ronald Reagan Library grounds. Can losing one hour of sleep really make a difference in your health? We have a health alert on the health risk linked to daylight saving time. NCAA March Madness is almost here, and chances are you're not going to the lake for a swim, but that a new survey claims a good portion of the working American public will take part. We'll have the numbers coming up. Live from Cleveland's News Center, driven by Don Joseph Toyota in Kent, this is Cleveland 19 News. We are springing forward on Sunday, setting our clocks forward an hour to daylight saving time. But what does a change mean for your health? A recent study from the researchers in Finland basically found that overall rate for stroke in two days after daylight saving time was 8% higher. And the Monday and Tuesday after a spring shift has also been associated with a 10% increase in heart attacks. Interesting information there. Well, Centers for Disease Control has said America's lack of sleep is becoming a national problem. Now, according to their latest study, a third of the population can't get seven hours of sleep at night. I would fall into that category. An estimated 50 to 70 million American adults have a sleep disorder and nearly 40% admitted to nodding off in the middle of their day. But when we are traveling, those problems can make it even harder to get a good night's sleep. So the hotel industry is looking at new ways to help guests sleep easy. Karina Mitchell shows us how. Karina Mitchell for CBS News, New York. Experts suggest apart from finding the right pillow for you, introducing neutral tones in the bedroom and eating a small pre-bedtime snack like granola can all help you sleep better. What's the I know. That's what I was... Buckwheat pillow and then uh, something with the mattress. Good to go. All right, we got sunshine on the way tomorrow and then that rain on Sunday. And then it really warms up to start the new work week. I'll explain coming up. Uh, it's one of my favorite times of year. March Madness is almost here. Brackets will be out on Sunday night. And according to outplacement firm Challenger Gray, more than 50 million Americans could participate in office pools this year to determine the winner of the NCAA men's tournament. That's about 20% of all employed workers in the U.S. That's up from 11% in 2014. Well, let's take a live look outside. This is from our Fiesel Roof Cam on this Friday. No rain problems for us tonight. At least the start of the weekend is looking pretty good. Jeff, over to you with more. It is uh, going to be a very bright day tomorrow. Nice looking one. Now, we're going to have a light wind, okay? What, what happened uh, last week, or earlier this week, I should say, when we had a strong south wind that prevented the lake breeze. But I have a feeling wind is going to be an issue Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Might be tough for some of the floats. Oh, yeah. Uh, on, uh, during uh, the parade. So but not too cold. This is not raining. That's the good news. Yeah. Forget the polls. We might be able to predict the outcome of the Ohio primary thanks to a local bakery. The story coming up. Forget the straw poll. We have a political poll that's a whole lot sweeter. Absolutely. And Amherst Bakery is trying to predict the Ohio primary with a cookie poll. Kodrowski's Bakery is selling political cookies with each candidate's face on them. Uh, they uh, sold about 5,000 cookies in the past Whoa. few weeks. They tell us the top sellers are Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, and Ohio Governor John Kasich. So far, none of the candidates have endorsed the cookies. But the bakeries, that's the best one right there. The bakery, uh, Kodrowski's, remain hopeful that one of them will stop in and take a bite. That's a lot of cookie what making. Was that this one? Is it. I don't know if I'm He's... more frightened by the faces you guys are making. What? I... It's Friday. The, Can you tell us Friday? The weather. Jeff, talk weather. about the weather. Oh, no. Talk <laughs> about the weather, please. All right, let's look at the weekend. So stay tuned. Nice. Thank you. Excuse these two. Thanks for watching tonight at 10. We hope you have a phenomenal weekend. Try to stay dry. Do you want to buy a new car for under 13 grand? 